Hey, this is Kevin with Gunsumer Reports, and what I've got here is a uh, a review of the Silencer Co. But it's really uh, Silencer Co. Weapons Research SWR. It's the uh, Radius uh, Laser Range Finder that uh, that they're making, and you can see right now I've got it installed on top of my Ruger Precision Rifle. And again, this this review is going to go into the details of the. Uh, the radius and uh, do some uh, range testing with it but uh, you know one of the things I I really struggled with looking at whether or not to even do a review on this is because uh, here recently I started noticing that the uh, the radius the price of the radius uh, was really coming down for example I got this particular one at uh, Brownells for four hundred dollars and uh, that which was an amazing price and when you compare that to MSRP, which is uh, around $950-ish, it, uh, it's just, that just seemed too good to be true. So I called up uh, Silencer Co. and tried to find out a little bit more information. And I talked to their customer service. And I asked them, you know, is this product being discontinued? And I'd already read on the, uh, the Internet at some different locations that, that, it, that it was being discontinued. I just wanted to get a confirmation on that, and it is. And also talked to them and tried to find out, well, this particular item has a lifetime warranty provided that you register it. And because of it being made under the name of uh, 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 Silencer Co. Weapons Research, SWR, who would the warranty be covered through? And he said, basically, Silencer Co. Uh, so that, that made me feel good on that part. And I asked him, you know, roughly how many of these units are out there in the market. And he said there's about 5,000 5, of them that are out there. So, you know, because of the, uh, the potential that uh, there's still a good deal that might be found out there for this particular item. And the fact that it, it does carry a, a very long warranty uh, for those who buy it and who register it. I thought I'd go ahead and do a review. Now I'm not going to do the full web page review to where I take a bunch of photos and uh, write up a bunch of information. I'm not going to invest that much time in it. But I am going to go over the details of this uh, particular product here and uh, you can kind of form your own opinion on what you think about the Silencer Co. Radius. Alright, I want to just cover real quickly the key features and it says that for ranging It'll range between 20 and 1,760 yards at dusk and dawn on reflective targets and a maximum range of 3,200 yards. Wow, that's a long ways. Um, continuous ranging for up to 12 hours. I'm just hitting the high points. Uh, operating temperature range, minus 20 to 120 degrees F. Uh, durable impact resistant housing. Uh, Picatinny rail compatibility. Um, waterproof IP67 rating, uh, weight 18.2 ounces including batteries, and uh, those are really the key, the key features I think. My Silencer Co. Radius came boxed like you see here, which is a different package than uh, when they were originally released. After removing the lid, you can see that inside the box was another small container box, and I'll get in that in a second. Some foam packing here, and then down in there is the uh, silencer code radius, and I'll pull it out in a minute. Inside the smaller box were these items, which is a target that gets used for zeroing the unit, some reflective tape, which will go here and here on the target to help give you some visibility uh, when you're looking for where the uh, laser projection is, and then another dot that you'll put on the target, which will represent the offset of the laser from the center line of your, your rifle scope. It also came with a uh, very blingy looking um, instruction manual, manual or owner's manual here. A couple of lens caps there. The um, remote uh, pressure switch right here. A little um, cap or screw here to be able to cover up the laser so that if you were using, the, using the, this uh, rangefinder in an area that didn't allow an active laser on a gun during hunting season, you could cover that up. And then some Velcro uh, tabs right here to put on your rifle so that your uh, pressure pad can sit against.
once you take the radius out of the box, your first impression is going to probably be uh, something of, of uh, durability or um, ruggedness or solidness. You know, it's got a, got a very hefty feel to it. Um, it definitely feels solid. The, um, the, the way that it's manufactured, you know, it, it's got the appearance of uh, extreme durability, which, you know, you would hope um, when, when Silencer Co. Weapons Research, and I'm just going to call them probably Silencer Co. or SWR in the future, but when they, when they released this, it had a pretty hefty price point of, uh, you know, over $900. And, you know, for, for this type of system, you would hope that it would have extreme ruggedness or extreme durability. Also, when they released this, it uh, came with a lifetime warranty. Uh, uh, as long as you registered, it was uh, warrantied for life, which that's a pretty strong warranty for uh, an electronic device. Now, you know, again, that just feeds into the cost and it feeds into uh, what what um, Silencer Co.'s belief is on the durability of this particular product. Alright, I'm going to cover the, the overall uh, external features just real quick and then I'll loop back around and cover them a little bit more in detail. But starting with the top of the unit, you got a bat battery cover here, which I'll show in more detail later. I'm not a big fan of that cover and uh, you'll see why in a minute. On the, uh, the end of the unit that you, you actually look at, uh, you basically got your, your on-off switch here. Um, which you can toggle between uh, constant readings or uh, spot readings uh, for your distance. You've got a button here to be able to go between uh, yards and meters, uh, a button here to turn your laser on, and a button here to make the display brighter, and another one over here to make it dimmer. On the uh, bottom of the unit here, you can see that it's got a uh, quick release uh, a Picatinny rail clamp right here. You can also see this knob here and on the side right right there you can see this knob for making your windage adjustment when you're zeroing in your laser to be lined up or parallel to your uh, scope reticle. And then at the front of the unit here you've got your, your uh, laser range finding uh, optics here. In the very center you've got your visible red laser and then right here is going to be your uh, elevation adjustment for zeroing the laser here to be parallel to the, your scope reticle. And over here on this side right here you've got where your um, um, remote pressure switch port where the uh, cable plugs in right there. Let's see here on the other side basically you've got the, uh, the logo uh, for SWR. Now I'll go ahead and get this battery compartment um, opinion out there is uh, when you, you remove the cover here, what you'll see is the unit's going to actually come with two uh, CR123 batteries installed on the inside. And there's a little uh, plastic uh, divider so that the, uh, the positive and negative between the ba batteries isn't making contact. So you're going to pull that divider out, so now they're going to make contact. To, uh, to go through, <coughs> sorry, to go through and put the battery cap on, it's, it's really a pain in my opinion because you can see there's a lip that's right here. I don't know how well you can see it. There's a lip that's right there and that lip all the way around has got to fit down in this pocket down here. Now um, I'm going to try to stick it on but I'm probably going to cut the tape here in just a second because it, honestly it takes me getting it in just the right position at just the right moment to be able to get it fully seated all the way around and I nearly have got it there and actually I think I did it and that might have been the quickest I've ever done it before so that one wasn't too bad maybe over time um, I'll get better at that but uh, again I'm just not a big fan of that uh, so I'm not still not sure that top was in there there it is it snapped in place um, whenever whatever it's in, in place I think the unit is going to have a uh, IP67 waterproof rating. Um, heck, I can't, I can't tell you off the top of my head. Maybe if I have time, I'll look it up and annotate the video. But it's supposed to be waterproof to some, some depth. Uh, you know, if you're really interested in this, if I didn't annotate it, you know, just go look it up. But uh, 
So that's really the top of the unit. Now, when you get to the uh, to the end of the unit here, that's got the controls. One of the things you're going to notice first is that there's this little panel here, and this panel is actually a display that can be oriented in different locations. And for example, if this is sitting on top of your rifle, you know, like that, then you might want the display to read, you know, where the the lettering is vertical. If you are sitting it on the left side of the rifle, like that, you may want to take this display, unscrew these little thumb screws here, which are similar to uh, screws like you might connect a, um, a monitor cable on the back of a computer. You'd pull this little display out, rotate it 90 degrees, push it. You see the pins in there here and how they made up? You would take, you'd get it lined up, push it back in place, and then you'd go through and you would tighten those thumb screws and now the display is going to read properly if you're mounting it on the side of your rifle. If you wanted to mount it on the other side of the rifle, you could do the same thing. I'm not sure if the display works uh, upside down, but I doubt anybody's going to mount it on the bottom of their rifle. I want to zoom in a little bit more on this connector here, and I don't know if you can tell, but uh, there's a little O-ring in there which also seals the connector. And, you know, one of the things, I'll, again, I want to point out is this just looks like a very mill speckish connector type in the way that it mounts and it seals. So, hopefully, this uh, little display being mounted on here is going to be very durable over time. Again, if it's not, um, Silencer Co., uh, you got a lifetime warranty on it, and uh, Silencer Co. should go in there and make it right but you need to make sure that you've registered your product if, if you purchase one. Now with the unit on, if you make two quick presses of the power button, it's going to turn the unit into a continuous mode. And so if you see flashing right over here in this corner right there, that uh, indicator is going to show that it's in the continuous mode. Two more quick flashes and you can see that the continuous mode indicator is off. Now, also in the display, what you're going to see, and there's no number showing right now because I'm not ranging anything here at the bench, but there's a, a series of large dashes right there. That's going to be your primary yardage reading that you're going to see uh, to, to what, that the unit thinks that that's what the distance is that you really are ranging. It's also going to have two um, smaller dashes right here, which is going to be a series of digits, which is going to represent what might be a secondary reading or it's it's a reading of basically a less intensity so if you're ranging and uh, you start getting deviations between these you may be getting some object that's in front of your target that may be giving you a false reading so they're giving you the option to actually see uh, s some more information that's coming back from the unit now you've also got right here you can see there's a, a battery indicator right there and in their owner's manual it says basically that the battery life is good for up to uh, 12 hours of continuous ranging, which is, uh, which is <coughs> really quite a long time to be in the continuous mode, in my opinion. The switch over here, okay, for yards and meters, I'm going to push the button, and you can see right there on the display where there's an M now, push it again, it's yards, so it's going to tell you whether you're, you're ranging in meters or yards. For me, I'll, I do everything in yards, so I'll end up doing with the Y. And this button right here will turn the laser on. And you can see right there in the screen right there is something that says VIS, which is the visible laser. So now you can see the, the dot that's turned on right there. I'll press it again, turn it off like that. Alright, for the uh, display the screen display brightness right now I should have it on its brightest setting and I think it appears as I toggle through that there's potentially nine settings so it's at the brightest right now and then I'm just going to go through and toggle down three four five six seven eight nine maybe not let's go back up one two three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
it's either eight or nine, but uh, you can see there's a there's a pretty good range right there. Um, I haven't gone out in the uh, full full bright sun right now um, to see, but right now the uh, the lights at my bench here are pretty bright, and I can clearly see the uh, the lettering right there. Now I flipped it around, and I'm looking at the front of the unit. And uh, you can see here very clearly. There's the uh, the optics that are going to go in and do the range finding, and it comes with a couple of lens caps right here, one for each lens. And uh, the lens cap has got a little thing that you can squeeze on it, so you can put it on, and it kind of fits down there nicely into a little groove. I'll go ahead and put both of these on, like that. And um, yeah, it comes with lens caps, but you know, I wish that. <laughs> Potentially either they were tethered together or something different flip-up caps. I'm not real sure, but most likely I just got the feeling that these are going to end up in a range bag somewhere and not on the unit, and next thing you know they're going to be lost, but that's just that's just how I roll, it seems like. Um, but anyway, so they, they give you caps. If you want them, you can use them. You can also see right here on the inside right there is where you've got the uh, the visible laser. It comes with this uh, this little threaded cap right here to be able to put in place and uh, actually screw into the uh, the front of that laser. If I can do it without covering up the camera lens. If I've got enough coordination to do it, I don't know. We'll see here. But, uh, heck, I might have to put it on the Allen wrench. All right, with the use of an Allen wrench, I was able to get the cap in there. But uh, it was it was difficult. I don't know if there was some some type of goop inside the threads or what. But uh, I was able to get it installed. Now I think you're going to have to be extremely careful in doing that because this cap I'm taking it back out, and it's also kind of hard to take out. I'm sure over time it'll get a little bit better. But what you're going to see. What you're going to see is is that there's only a couple of threads that are actually going to engage in there, and it's a very fine pitch thread. So if you're not careful, you're going to strip that out pretty darn quick. Um, there's a chance that whatever the coating is that's uh, that's on this uh, this cap here, and the threads in there, that coating may be um, causing a little bit of interference or build up, you know, creating just kind of a dimensional. Uh, issue there, but anyway, it's not a major issue. But uh, probably the real point here in this whole cap for the laser right there is that you're going to need to check if you're going to use this in a hunting situation. You're going to need to check what your uh, local regulations are going to be about using an electronic device that's attached to your gun like this for range finding, and um, or and also whether or not you can have a laser, an active laser, on your rifle. If you can't have an active laser, clearly you're going to have to put the cap in place. But again, you're going to have to check for your local regulations. For me, uh, the rifle I'm going to put this uh, on is really not a hunting rifle. I'm going to put it on my Ruger Precision Rifle and 6.5 Creedmoor, and it's more of a range rifle, so I'm really not going to have an issue for me. So after this moment right here, the cap will most likely stay inside the bag in the uh, box that it came in. While we're looking at the front of the unit, I also want to point out this adjustment wheel right here. And I may have already mentioned that this is for, uh, for elevation and that this one back here is for windage. But really, that's only if the unit's installed on top of your rifle to where that wheel right there is going to truly give you an elevation adjustment. If you've got it installed on the side of your rifle, then that wheel right there is going to be used to give you your, your windage adjustment. This, uh, this front wheel actually has some really firm resistance. and you can, I mean, you can turn it without too much issue with your hands, but you can also listen. You can hear, I think you can hear, the, uh, the clicks while you're making the adjustments. The, um, go ahead and look at the side of the unit right here, and again, this, uh, this, this wheel right here, if, you're, if it's installed on top of your rifle, on top of your scope, this is going to give you your windage. If it's installed on the side of your rifle, this is going to give you your elevation adjustment. For that knob right there, it's a little bit easier to turn 
just I think only because you can get to it better. And uh, it's got positive detents in there, but it doesn't have the same uh, audible clicks. I mean, you can barely hear them, but they're not as audible as the, uh, the other adjustment. All right, since we're looking at the side of the unit also, right here in this area, where you plug in your remote has got a little cap here that, uh, that fits over that to seal it and you remove that cap right there um, whenever you want to plug in your remote. For me, again, that's another opportunity unless I always leave it plugged in. That's just another opportunity for, um, for me to lose something. But uh, anyway, if, I'm, if I do good, I'll put it all back in the bag and keep it in the box. Now the pad here, the pad is going to be just like this button right here. So if I hold it for two seconds, you can see the unit turned on. Two quick pushes. You can see over there, the unit, that little flashing plus up in that corner, the unit went into continuous mode. Two quick pushes, it's out of continuous mode. Hold it for three seconds, it's off. The remote cord length here is 18 inches. And the, the end of the, uh, the pad here, or the end of the cord, I guess has got the hook portion, and then the unit comes with three of these uh, sticky on one side and loop portion on the other side, so you can mount it on the side of your rifle so that you can mount this uh, little pressure pad wherever you want on your rifle. The uh, mount here should be able to fit any uh, 1913 uh, Picatinny rail, and what you're going to see is that it's got one recoil lug, which is right here. It's got a uh, cross bolt, which you can see see right here. It's quick release, so you got a cam lever that's right there, and you can adjust the force for clamping the unit in place by screwing or unscrewing the uh, cam lever bolt. I don't know if you can tell, but I can screw it in quite a bit. And so if I try to clamp it on my rail, it's going to have a lot of force or I won't be able to clamp it one or the other. I'm not sure how well that's actually coming out on the video, but the unit ended up weighing in at 18.8 ounces, uh, and uh, including the batteries. The uh, specs are actually say 18.2, so it's uh, about 0.6 ounces over, which really isn't that much. The unit comes with a target here for zeroing, and it also comes with some re reflective tape that you're going to actually adhere at these locations just like it shows right there on the target. And it's going to come with a reflective dot that um, you're going to put where you think the laser beam should actually be. So for example, if you mount the, uh, the radius on top of your rifle, on top of the scope, then you're going to want to measure the offset from the center line of the laser to the center, center line of your rifle scope. And we'll just say hypothetically that's two inches. So I'd go through and I'd put this dot right here two inches above the center line of the target. So as I zeroed in the, the, the unit, I would put the, uh, the center of my optic or the reticle would match up with these lines right here and I would make whatever adjustments are required on the radius here and there to be able to bring that laser to where it actually hits this point right here. Now, the reason that they put this reflective tape on there is if you're having trouble actually finding where your um, the laser beam here is actually impacting, maybe it's, it's very bright that day or it's at, at a very long distance and bright, then if you move that laser beam across some of these reflective targets here on the sides, then hopefully that laser beam is going to show up. Now, I don't know if it's going to show up here as any more reflective, but I'm not sure if it's able to show it being more reflective or not there. But that's what, in theory, that's what you're going to hope to see is when the uh, your um, reticle is centered on the very center of that target right there. Now in my case I wanted to install the radius on top of my Ruger, Ruger Precision rifle here in uh, 6.5 Creedmoor 
And what I've got is the uh, the Burris XTR2 scope and some Burris uh, Extreme Tactical rings right there. Now, to install it on top of the scope, clearly the ideal situation would be to uh, to purchase a ring cap that comes up here with a short piece of Picatinny rail that comes across here. And there are manufacturers who make rings and caps just to do that, but unfortunately Burris doesn't have that for this particular style of uh, rings here. So what I've done is I went and I searched on the internet and I found a couple of items down here and I'm going to pull them out of the box here in just a second. And um, in my opinion this is kind of a Mickey Mouse way to do it. Uh, I'm not sure if it'll stay this way eventually I may uh, replace the mounts if I really like this setup. This one here is is basically a, uh, a ring pair that will go around my 34 millimeter tube sitting right here and will give me a short piece of Picatinny rail. I got this off of Amazon. To me I think it was maybe twelve dollars and it's hard to see. I don't know if you can see it in there. It's uh, by TAC Vector Optics. And I think the uh, the number is X001GZRO7L. But anyway, got it off of Amazon.com. The problem with this unit, and I'll show it installed here in a second, is that it didn't sit high enough to get the the radius up high enough so that the front of the radius didn't interfere with my scope. Now if I were willing to grind off those little lugs right there, it would have worked perfect. But you know you never you know for me I didn't want to grind those off because this has a lifetime warranty. And if I go through and start jacking around like that then there's a good chance of ever having an issue. Um, in my lifetime, which hopefully is a long time, that they might, you know, uh, void my warranty. So I didn't want to do that. So to resolve that, again on Amazon, I bought this rail riser here. Not too proud of this whole setup, but uh, it was the shortest I could get to get me a little bit more height. And it also allowed me to get a little bit more rail forward because the unit itself of where your, where your lug is right here, your recoil lug, is actually a little bit forward so I wanted to to have more of a purchase there so that my uh, turret cap for elevation didn't in any way interfere with the uh, the screen on the back now this uh, this rail riser was the 7 16th height which was the lowest I could find it's by tack fire again I found it on uh, amazon.com and I think it was about ten dollars something like that and the uh, part number is X000LVA, it's an Apple 9D7. I will go ahead and show that these, uh, this little ring mount right here, rail ring mount, it was really a 35 millimeter mount. I don't know why they did it that way. And I've got a 34 millimeter tube. So they say it also fits a 34 millimeter. And the way that they do it is it comes with some adhesive foam uh, this this right there and so I basically took the foam to get my widest purchase there on the uh, the body of the scope and I, I cut it in half and put a layer on each side so it kind of sticks out on each side like that again not too proud of it a little bit of uh, Mickey Mouse stuff going on here but I'm hoping that it'll uh, hold the radius solid um, I've already installed it once and I took it back apart and I was really pretty happy with uh, the firmness that I was able to get this. They have another style that uh, actually has a single screw in the center right there. I opted to go with the double screw because I wanted to try to get as much rigidity in this direction right here as possible with that double clamping screw. This view right here is just with the, uh, the one uh, ring installed that um, I'll show it when I pull it off. And you can see how in the front it's really sitting too close here and in the back it it would probably work but um, really I would I, it would be better if I had it forward uh, one recoil lug um, distance to get it further away from that turret cap but again if I were to grind this off I could probably make that work and I really like that low height but again I'm not going to do that so if I pull it off here you'll see that was just sitting on this particular cap right here. Now I've got this rail riser 
that I'm going to put on top of that. And I'll loosen those up and put it on and show you here in a second. All right, now that this uh, riser is put on top of the uh, that Picatinny ring right there, you can see if I can get it in there. It's now sitting at a. Uh, let me go one lug forward. Sometimes I struggle with being the cameraman and a one-handed uh, operator, but uh, I was able to get the radius here installed on that rail, and these uh, these nuts here are actually getting in a little bit of, of the way of the uh, clamp bar, but it works in this case. Again, that's that's just my issue. All this is just my issue with how I'm mounting it. If I were to go through and install it up here, potentially it would be no issue. Um, I'll have to look and see whether or not I've got any interference with my uh, my bipod right there. But uh, I really wanted it to be installed uh, right here on top because I'd rather just keep vertical displacement happening than more uh, lateral displacement um, in width. Now that it's installed, what I need to do for zeroing is basically take the dimension from the center line of the optic here up to the center line and actually it's not quite the center line because what you'll see the laser sits just above center line so I'm really going from the center line of the optic to this center line of the laser right here in my case the distance between the laser here and the center line of the optic was two and three quarter inches approximately pretty close but um, so what I'll do is I'll end up placing this dot again two and three quarter inches up this vertical axis to about right there and I'll go ahead and stick it right there and then that'll be ready for me to go and actually um, try to dial in the laser to the, um, the center line of the scope. I also installed the remote pressure switch right here on the side of the rifle with a little velcro tab and I took the um, the the cord itself, you can kind of wrap it around the handguard right there, right there, and then it's plugged in on the other side. And so if I wanted to, I could pull it off real quick and stow it away if I didn't want to use it. Uh, otherwise, it's, it's not too bad. I could probably do better with a little bit of effort to uh, get it wrapped around there. But uh, that's what I'll start out with. Hey, this is Kevin with Gunsumer Reports, and I'm uh, down here at my range at Clearwater Lake. And what I'm taking a look at right now is the Silencer Co. Radius Rangefinder, which I've got installed here on the top of my scope. Now, for zeroing, if you, you know, they, they give you basically a, a target here for you to zero your, your rangefinder to the reticle on your scope. And by doing that, basically, you measure the distance from the center of your reticle to the center of the reticle to the center of the laser on the rangefinder, you put a dot here that's reflective and that at some distance, like 100 yards, you go through and you put the reticle here and you adjust the laser to hit that dot. Now, I didn't do that, but uh, I'm sure that works. Now, I've got a illuminated reticle, so I was able to, to actually see the laser and my illuminated reticle at night and I did the zeroing effectively at uh, about 150 yards. Now for me, just as a check to, uh, to see how well it would do, um, I've sat here at a known distance. This right here is, uh, is around 470, one, two, three yards depending on where I'm sitting at. And I've got a target that's back in the woods down there and I'll turn the camera here in just a second so you can see it. But what I've been able to do is actually look through the woods at that target, and sure enough, um, it's showing 473 yards here at this distance. Again, this is a known distance. I've been shooting from here for years. If I back up further down the spillway, I can actually get 500 yards. It's just more convenient for me to set up right here. I've got multiple targets that uh, are located down there, and, uh, and I've got some down the lake that uh, are, at, are at distances that I, I know and I'm going to go ahead and range those in a few minutes just to check but I was very impressed with 
how well the radius would actually look through this tunnel um, that I've got down there to be able to see my, my longest distance target. Anyway, I'll show you here in a second. All right, I'm going to zoom in on that target that's down there. And you can see I've got multiple targets going down the lake. I've got a torso, a larger torso, and that's about as far as I can zoom in sitting down there, um, 410-ish yards. But up to the uh, upper left corner, you can see back in the woods, that's the 473 uh, target torso. And uh, it, it ranged that uh, without issue. just did a comparison of the uh, Silencer Co. Radius with this Leopold RX-1000 uh, rangefinder. I've had this one, um, I don't know, maybe six years. I did a very detailed review on it, and it's been very accurate, everything that I've been able to determine on it. And so I was just comparing the radius against this, uh, this, this the Leopold here. Now, for my longest target, it, uh, I've always had, had trouble ranging with the with this handheld at this distance only because it's hard holding something this small like this I think it's either a four or six X uh, power but um, I've had always had a hard time really holding still so typically I had to range from the other end back here and shoot against the uh, the bank here of the uh, the lake to get my initial reading and then measure off from there but uh, with, with the Leopold, I wasn't able to get that 473 number. I kept getting some something in the background at this distance with this. But the 473 yard number uh, that I got with the Silencer Co., I believe that's, that's exactly what this should be right here. Now for the other distances, the larger torso that I've got down there, uh, the Silencer Co. registered 414, the Leopold registered uh, 412, um, one of my next targets matched at 371, both devices. Uh, another target, you know, matched at 307, both devices. Another target, 235, both devices. And another one at 196, both devices. So, you know, this isn't, you know, completely scientific. Um, I know there's always room for error, but, you know, I've, I've been shooting this for years, this, this one, particular one here and I've been comfortable with the readings that, that I get from this and the review that I did on it. And I've also been comfortable with the results that I've got whenever I've calculated my bullet drop at these different distances. The uh, Silencer Co. Radius is, uh, is matching that very good. And it does uh, make it easy to sit there and zoom in and actually know that you're, you're uh, ranging the spot that you're looking at. At, uh, at some point, I'll probably go through and continue to, to tweak or dial in the, uh, the zero on this, even at a longer longer distance. One of the things that I found is that I've got a target down there that uh, is not facing exactly this direction. It's a small target. I think it's maybe a six inch, six inch or eight inch gong. It's, uh, it's got an angle that's kind of up a little bit and facing that way. I wasn't able to get a reading with either one of these devices with that particular target. Uh, all I could get was the background reading on that. And I don't know if that's just a result of how the target's hanging or facing, um, but it was interesting that both of them wouldn't give me a result on that target. It's sitting right near the bank, so in the past I've always just just uh, um, ranged the bank to be able to get the yardage on that. But uh, that that may be a limitation that you that you might struggle with if you're shooting steel plates. And there may be some orientation thing to where you're not getting good re reflectivity back to your device. I don't know. I'm just going to have to look at that more over time and get a better feel for it. Overall, uh, I'm pretty happy with the with the, the Silencer Co. Radius. Now, one of the things that I did notice, you know, when I was zeroing it at night, is that you know when you look at this device, I can actually wobble it up here, and the wobble. I'll get the video in a second. The wobble is not related to my mount, but it's very clear. You can see the wobble within the device itself. So, you know, once you get it zeroed, you can actually sit there, especially at night if you've got an illuminated reticle and uh, you see the laser dot out in the distance. You know, you can actually see it see it shift around. Fortunately, it does seek a, uh, a common zero location, but it, it kind of does with a little joggling of it. Uh, it does come back to the same location. 
at longer distances, that may be a problem. It may not be. Uh, you know, you'd have to really uh, look at that yourself. But, you know, at, at these distances that I'm shooting at right here, which my range is only to 500 yards, uh, I don't see where that's going to be an issue. Uh, but that may be something that you want to consider. Now, what I'm going to show you here is just watch right here at this location, this distance between the knob here and the body. You know, and you can see that I can actually rotate, if I get the camera zoomed in on it, I can actually rotate the housing or the body and make that gap smaller or lower. You know, so, you know, if you turn it on at night, if you have it, turn it on at night, look out there at your reticle and see the, see the dot, you'll see that there is some shift. Again, it does kind of seek a normal location, but uh, if you were at extreme long ranges, that could potentially be an issue. I went ahead and set up the uh, radius at my 100 yard range. And so what I've got, and you can't really see it that well, but down there, I went ahead and installed the, uh, the reflective target. And I'm telling you what, those reflective strips make a huge difference in being able to see the, uh, the laser dot. So really, what I wanted to kind of get from this is I'm just going to, I've got it all dialed in at, uh, with that target down there. It's about perfect as far as the best that you can dial it in. And I'm going to be shooting here, uh, actually looking at uh, another product, the Griffin Optimus Suppressor. But uh, I just want to see if we end up getting some zero shift. I just put about 15 rounds uh, through the rifle, um, and this is 6.5 Creed more. So whatever the recoil vibration is that you get, um, the, uh, the radius up here got that same recoil vibration. I went through and looked at the, um, the location of the zeroing laser on the target against the reticle uh, before and after. And actually it did a really good job of, um, of maintaining that zero, uh, you know, as far as, as, as with the vibrations and the recoil. Um, you know, if, if you end up buying something like this, you know, it's like with any, any of these, these, these items, you need to really, you know, spend some time at the range and understand what your gun's going to do and your gear's going to do. But so far, uh, I was actually surprised to see how well um, the pre-shooting the pre zero of the radius to the scope and the post-shooting zero radius to the scope actually held pretty solid. Well, that completes my review of the Silencer Co. Uh, or SWR radius rangefinder, and you know for the price that I paid for it, uh, $400, uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I, uh, I'm not. You know, it's one of those things to where uh, you know I haven't used it enough to really uh, get a good feel for am I going to love it long term. But so far, I like it, and I think it's a, a good addition to this platform. I've got it installed here. You can see on top of the scope. Uh, and, and I'm going to just have to, over time, really come to a real decision. Do I prefer a top-of-the-scope mount or would I prefer some, some uh, side-of-the-rifle mount? I just really have got to, got to come to grips on that myself. But if you have the opportunity, if you see one out there for sale for, uh, for a really good price, um, you may want to take a close look at it. It, uh, it offers a lot of capability. That capability is dedicated to a single rifle platform. But uh, it, it might be something that you'd like. Anyway, if you like this review, please like or subscribe or both. And I'll try to keep bringing detailed reviews in the future. Thanks.